This video is being sponsored by Educative.io, which has a collection of well-crafted courses for software developers. What I did from my side is organize a three-month giveaway. The rules for participating in the giveaway will be mentioned in the later part of the video. Congratulations to Sunrises for winning the one-year Educative I.O. subscription from the previous giveaway. Now, talking about today's problem, we are going to find the max of array, which is nothing but uh, the first positive missing value from the array. And this problem is very interesting because we just not have to do it in order and time, but the added difficulty is because of the order one space complexity demand. And as we will see in this video, we'll walk through the initial ideas that we will have and try to figure out how to achieve the order one space complexity. And these are some questions which even if you are good at competitive programming, you still will find issues. And that is why it's important for us to go through such questions so that we also have ideas to tackle questions dealing with order one space complexity, because this is something which you will not generally encounter during competitive programming. All right, so as I have said, we have to find the smallest missing positive number from the array. In this case, we have three, four, seven, and one. So one is already there. I can see that two is missing actually. So the answer for this one would be a two, right? And what we can do is we can do one scan, order in time, that's fine. We can do multiple scans, but the time complexity is order n, and the space complexity demand is order one, which makes this problem really cool and difficult at the same time. Now. How do you approach such a question? A very initial idea that comes to mind is, let's have a count array. For example, you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which are the indices, and the array values are just telling us how many times a number occurs in the array. So if you can see four, for example, you can see that the count value of four is one, which is a fancy way of saying, it means that four occurs one times in the array, as you can see, three, four, seven, one. So count five is zero, which means five is not there in the array and so on and on. So if I scan my array and I maintain this count array correctly, so at the end, I can tell you very easily that what is the first smallest missing positive number from the array. So in this case, as you can see, two is the first in dice in the count array for which we have a value zero, which means two is missing from the array. So this approach would work, but we are of course using extra space. We are using order in space. Even if you use hash maps, a lot of people might be saying that why are you maintaining count array? Let's use a hash map. Even that, even that will take order in space. But other thing is it's not taking order in space in this case, like it's taking order of max of the array space. In this case, the array size is just four, but we are taking a count array of size seven because seven is the maximum element in A. Well, you can tune down that to order n because you really do not need numbers greater than n because the first missing number, which will be missing. So, so the first missing number will lie in the range one to n plus one. You just have n places in the array. So the first missing positive number will of course lie in the range one to n plus one, right? So you can ignore the rest of bigger numbers like seven in this case, you really need not maintain such a big array. But even then you're using order n space and that's not what this question asks. So at this point of time, a lot of people might go into uncomfortable zone, especially during coding interviews, because it might feel that, like, how exactly should I tackle this problem? Now, just to give you a brief idea. So this is one technique which is really used a lot in terms of array manipulations and just doing it in order one space complexity. Now, in this case, what we are going to do is we are going to iterate over all the indices. So our I variable starts from one and it will loop until four. And right now we see that at the first index, we have the number three. So what we do is we go to the third index and we multiply the number at this position by negative one, as simple as that. Now we move to next position, all right, we have a four and we go to the fourth index and we multiply the number at this position by negative one. Now I go to third number, which is seven in this case. Oh my God, we don't have such a big array. I simply ignore it. Now the next number is one. So I go to the first index and the number at that is multiplied by negative one. That's all. We have completed the scan order and time. Now I again start my iteration from one to four and I see the first index, which is having a non-negative number. In this case, it's having four. I can see that this is positive and I can simply say that this is the first number which is missing from my array. So this index two is telling me the number which is actually missing in the array because 
for all indices in the range 1 to n, we would have multiplied by negative 1, right? So if we are encountering a positive number, we know that the index, corresponding index, is that particular number which is missing and it is the smallest positive number. So that's the pretty much algorithm which looks like order and time, but here is what, like we are using order one space, everything seems to work, but the problem is we have to find the first index which has non-negative number. And this approach will fail if array has negative values. For example, consider if four was already a negative four, right? So all the numbers would have been negative and you would be like really confused as in which is the smallest number which is missing. So this approach was good enough, but it's of course failing when array is having negative values or let's say if array is having zeros, even then it will fail. So this was very close enough, but this approach unfortunately doesn't seem to work over here. Now I'm requesting you to pause the video and like give your brain a few trials, like probably you can still crack it. So just pause the video for a minute or two and then we can continue with the rest of the video. All right, so I'm assuming that you have tried this on your own. Now moving to the solution, uh, it's a bit tricky and I, I hope you will learn this technique as well and probably it will be useful for you in future interviews. So um, the idea is something like we place the ith number at ith position. So the third number, I mean the number three will be placed at index three. The number two should be placed at index two. The number n should be placed at index n, right? That is the idea. That's what we want to do. Then uh, what we are going to do is while we are doing this activity, the negative numbers, I mean, we can simply ignore that. And then what uh, we can also ignore is the num are the numbers which are greater than n, right? Because uh, in such cases, we, we don't have a big enough array to put them in the right place. The ith number should go to ith index. So now I can claim that the first index i that does not have i in its value is the smallest missing positive number from the array. That's the overall idea. And I, let me give you a simulation of that. Now, again, I'm iterating i from one to four. I see that i uh, the current number is three. So I go to the third index and I just simply put it over there. And the number at third position, it comes back to the current ith position. So I simply performed a swapped operation so that the number three goes to index three. And as you can see, the number three is now at index three and seven came back to ith position. Now, of course, I cannot put seven on any correct position because it's too big. So I'm simply moving on. I am ignoring the seven. Now four should be placed at the fourth position. So what I do is I simply put it at fourth position and basically I perform a swap operation which puts four in the fourth position and one takes over the place of four. Now, again, we should not simply move our i to next value. Uh, you, you will otherwise miss placing one in its correct position. So now we will also test whether one is in correct position or not. Of course, it's not in correct position. So we will place it in correct position, which is index one. And now seven takes back the place at position two. But again, we are simply ignoring seven. So now we increment our i. And now three is at position three, we don't do anything. Four is at position four, we again not do anything. Now I do other uh, iteration and I can see that the first index at which the number is not equal to the index itself is two. And that exactly is the smallest missing positive number. And that is the beautiful idea behind this approach. Since we have placed ith number at ith position, if let's say at seventh position, you are not having a seven, it means that the original array does not have a seven, right? And again, we take order n time and the time complexity again for this is uh, order n and space complexity is order one. And it is beautiful. And as I will walk you through the code, I will again reiterate on that. But this was the overall idea. And I really loved solving this problem. All right, um, if it's still not clear, I would probably request you to watch the video again. Otherwise, you can also proceed with the code walkthrough. Probably that will make things more clearer right? So um, as I'm saying, the first index i that does not have i in its value is the smallest positive number which we have to return. So let's say we are having this function first missing positive, which takes input as an array, which is a list of integers. And this is Python pseudocode. Hopefully everyone will understand this because it's kind of English. Now what I'm doing is um, I'm storing the length of the array in the variable n. And then as I've said, I'm iterating from zero to n minus one. And in this particular piece of code, I'm using zero based indexing. So make sure that you do not get confused over there. Now, uh, the correct, the current number is nums i and the correct position it should go to is nums i minus one because we are using zero based indexing. So the number three should go to index two, number seven should go to index six. 
So the correct position for ith number is num psi minus one. Now what I do is I perform a check that whether I am interested in placing this number at the correct position. So if the number lies in the range one to n, so it's, if it's negative, I will ignore that. If it's greater than n, I will ignore that. So if it's in the range one to n, I can probably place this number at the correct position. And if it is uh, in my interested range, the next thing which I check is whether the number at the correct position is the present number or not. And if it's not the case, which means we can probably do a swap operation and place it at the correct position. And that's what I'm doing. I'm swapping the elements present at the ith position and the element at correct position so that my current number goes to the correct position. That's all I'm doing. And at this point of time, num psi has changed. So I update my correct position variable because as you have seen in the code, once you perform a swap operation, it might happen that the new number which is coming at the ith position, it might need to be swapped again, right? If you don't remember, just go back to the video I had mentioned this point. So that's why it's very important to write a while loop over here because once you place number three at position three, it might happen that the new number which is coming at the ith position again needs to be swapped. So that's what I'm doing using a while loop. So it might look like the time complexity is more than order n, but the claim uh, that I would put forward is for every number from one to n, I am exactly putting a swap operation once in, 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 in its entire lifetime. So all the numbers from one to n, I can at max perform order n swaps and that's why the time complexity is order n, right? That's like magic if you are really new and a beginner. So dive, deep dive into it, try to absorb it at your own pace, watch the video again. If it's still not clear, let me know in comments. So once we have done this process, at the end, what we are trying to do is basically iterate from left to right. And if i plus one, because again, zero based indexing guys. So if i plus one is not equal to nums i, it means that this particular number does, did, not ex, uh, did not exist in our array. And since we are iterating from left to right, this is the smallest number as well. And that's why we return it. And well, at the end, if we did not return anything, it means all the numbers from one to n existed. So we can simply return n plus one at the end. If you are a C++ lover, I have also done the implementation in C++ and you can find all the links in GitHub and make sure to follow me and start the repository over there. Links can be found in the description. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much about this. I hope you really enjoyed solving this greedy kind of problem. Now coming back to the sponsors, thanks educative.io for sponsoring this video. I do like their subscription plans, which offer you educative unlimited, which is basically you pay once, but get access to all courses individually. So you don't have to buy courses individually. You pay once and you have courses, uh, you have access to all courses. So they have basically annual and monthly plans. Feel free to check that out. What I did from my site is for the first 70 users, you can get extra discount if you use the coupon Rachit and you can go to educative.io slash Rachit to enjoy the discount. We also have a free giveaway for this video. And the rules for that, you can again find that in video description, but you have to comment your Instagram ID uh, in the comment section below in the video. And once you do that, you also make sure that you follow me on my Instagram so that once uh, I decide the winner, I can reach out to you or I can send you a message on Instagram. Once you do that, the winner will of course get the membership access to all the courses on Educative for three months. And I really feel it can be really awesome for developers. It's a good learning experience for you. That's all guys. Uh, I had only this particular thing for the video. I really enjoyed solving this problem. If you want to connect on social medias, Rachit IITR is the handle on both Instagram and Twitter. You can follow me over there. And that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one guys. Till then, happy coding. Bye bye. And I'm going back to make more simple, animated and clean videos for you. I'll see you in the next one guys. Till then, bye bye and take care.